I gotta watch Disney movies now. I'm not looking forward to that. Because when you're a parent, you gotta watch Disney movies, right? I'm not looking forward at all. It's terrible, right? See, I grew up really poor, though. And Disney movies, they're terrible for poor people because they have this, it's the same story, every single one of them. It's a bunch of poor people living in a shitty town. Some rich dude comes along, picks one of them out, into the movie, everybody else is still shitty and poor. It's like an hour and a half lottery commercial. <laughs> Little Mermaid, great example of this, right? She's a spoiled rich girl. Daddy's the king. She's like, I want legs. I want legs. <laughs> You're a fish. Shut the fuck up, all right? You don't get everything you want, Ariel, okay? The world is 70% water. Go swim somewhere. Enjoy your life. And you don't know this prince? He could be a sadistic perv. Now that you got legs, get on your knees, bitch, all right? You're part of my world now, huh? That's how it ends, always. Aladdin teaches kids uh, uh, privilege, right? Because he, he's poor. Right? And then he gets any wish he wants. And you like, do you want to help out the starving children there? Or do you want to build some shelters for the homeless? He's like, nah, I want to bang the princess. <laughs> Whip me up one of them carpets so I can get the hell out of the ghetto right now. <laughs> and Beauty and the Beast is not a movie that I'm going to show to my, my children, you guys. That is a creepy movie when you really sit down and think about it. You know what I mean? Right? It's like, because she makes a decision towards the end of the movie. She's like, I'm, I'm going to make out with this dog right here. Right? <laughs> And we know he becomes a human, but she didn't know that when she did it, right? Disney's very smart. They transform him into a human, so they narrowly escape a bestiality rating right at the end of the movie. It's a very sexist movie, too, because they've never made one of those movies where there's a guy being chased by a female beast, all right? You know why? Because that'd be a two-minute movie. They're like, come on over here, beasts. He grabs onto it, it magically transforms into Scarlett Johansson. She turns around and goes, man, beauty and the sheep. It's a tale as old as time, right? People have been having sex with sheep for thousands of years. I said that one night, there was a Scottish guy in the crowd. He's like, you gotta have sex with him next to a cliff. Then you kick him off afterwards. I was like, you didn't just think of that, brother. You have to have done it. That's not like a, my imagination kind of thing, you know? A little bit bizarre. I gotta, I gotta teach my son to be a man. That's a big deal, you know? Gotta get him ready for life, all right? I think it's, it's hard because I don't like sports too much. You know, my brother, he loves football, loves football. I do not. So according to him, I am a huge fan of penises in my mouth. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. When did it become manly to sit at home and watch guys in tights jumping on each other? I was like, dude, if that is your version of manliness, I gotta let you know that you can put gay porn on right next to a football game, and at some point in time, those positions are gonna sync up. <laughs> right? There's gonna be a big dude on top grabbing a ball, is what I'm saying, all right? I ran cross country in high school, you guys. That was a manly sport, all right? Because there were six dudes in short shorts, and my job was to get as far away from them as possible, all right? <laughs> if that's your version of manliness, is all I'm saying, right? <laughs>